Baby Dome, Prairie View A&M. Prairie View, Texas, as we get set for the second game of the SDN doubleheader. By the way, the Prairie View A&M Panthers all wearing warm-ups with the number 33 and male on the backside, and that is in honor of a fallen comrade, a guy who played basketball here, male Riathon on a slick highway in Wyoming, a car crash that took his life in November, so now they honor him with the warm-ups, the number 33, and one of the Panthers, specifically Nolan Wilson, wore 33, but after that point, they took 33 off the roster, and Nolan Wilson will don 15. Right, that, that's a, I think that's a, a great move by the staff here at uh, Prairie View to honor one of their fallen leaders, and, and I know, I know that the parents uh, feel touched. Because when you're in athletics, you are still part of the family. Saw him play ball here, I guess, back in 2013, his senior year, and uh, certainly missed, but remembered as we get basketball underway on Martin Luther King Day. 2015, tipped, and Grambling is in control to begin this one. Right, one of them has a dream of walking out of here with a victory tonight. We will see if it is Grambling picking up their first win in SWAC play this year, or if it will be too straight for Prairie View A&M. Chase Comier, six-footer out of Baltimore, Maryland, had it. Shot clock already into single digits. Brown bringing it inside, finger roll for two. It's a nice drive. I think both teams are filling each other out in the early going. Hey, good with it. He's a Pensacola product. Played his junior college ball in the GCAA, where my good buddy Dave Elder is the commissioner. Played at East Georgia. Pull up chopper from the elbow, dropped in, and we are tied at two apiece thanks to the guy you expect to score a lot, and that's Montreal Scott. Montreal has been doing it all year long, so I think Gramlin knows it. They worked on a lot of these sets in practice yesterday. Green coming up with a loose ball. Back it goes, and there is a foul on Anwa Kabuchi. Gramlin's got to learn to get back a, a little bit more. Um, Oh. They didn't have enough people back. It was three on one, and the ball, everybody started out even, leaving the paint on this on the other end. So uh, the Grambling players got to learn to uh, get back, stop the basketball so that they can set their defense up. And it's York, by the way, who is shooting free throws. And not Anwu Kamuche. Foul committed a, by Shine. Right, and, and York is a 67% free throw shooter, so you expect some of those free throws to go down. About two thirds of them. <laughs> Nothing went down there, though. Just dribbled out of bounds by Richard Freeman. But see, that's a dead ball turnover, so now they got a chance to set their defense. The worst kind of turnover is that live ball turnover, and that's what uh, Coach Walker was worried about. And good with a handoff to Scott over it will go to Green. Scott set up for the three. In and out. Three point try from Shine. Long range miss. But another opportunity as Freeman comes up with a loose ball. All right. Right off the back, first thing Coach Rim talked about was rebound, rebound, rebound. They've already given up two offensive rebounds. Scott with the alley-oop. They alley it, they didn't oop it. They didn't finish <laughs> it off. On Wukamuche could not get it to drop in after the toss from Scott into the corner. It goes, got away from Shine. Well, we highlight jams. What about the non-jam? Whoops. <laughs> I guess that's the alley whoops. Yeah. <laughs> Our 
our executive producer, James Crenshaw, who's got like a cheeseometer or anything. Anything I say cheesy, he, he says that one gets the pass. <laughs> hey, good's got it in the timeline. Looks like York was thinking about a three. I don't think that's in his repertoire. <laughs> Typically think not of a 6'9 guy, although we've seen it on occasions. Hey, good. Over to the 6'9 York. Got to walk on that one. Gave it to the big guy in the, wrong, in the bad spot. Cormier looking at a wall of white jerseys as he makes his way to midcourt. There's a bump by Scott. And now both of the stars have gotten one. Shine picking up a foul earlier, and Scott has got a foul now. Yeah, but they can't, they can't afford to give away these cheap fouls. Brown working it to the right and then left the ball behind. Scott is there to pick it up. Two on two the break. Scott says, let me take this myself. And it's Prairie View A&M with their first lead. Grumman's got to do a better job of protecting the basketball. Three-point shot would not drop for Valerio Althea. Althea is a junior out of Jonesboro, Louisiana. Hey, good. Able to get rid of it out front. Too strong with the three from Green. Three-point shot is one of the things Coach Rim doesn't want his team to settle for. He wants them to try to <clears throat> go for the two-point shot, three-point only when it's wide open. Easy two when you are six foot ten. That was great penetration. Scott penetrated and kicked it off. Nice easy bucket. On Wukamuche getting the two to make it a 6-2 advantage. Prairie View A&M into the corner. Three-point try. Cormier off. Another offensive rebound for Gramlin. Kyle Williams getting the grab and then getting fouled. Turn out on the floor. Men's game underway. By the way, got a late start because of some power issues during the ladies' game, but we're rolling. And the Panthers on top by four. Toyota Swag Basketball Tournament in Houston, Texas. Five days of nonstop action, and it all goes down. March 10th through the 14th, the swag is driven by passion and motivated by pride. Because in the swag, history will be made. We do it for the love of the game. Visit www.swaghoops.org. Nearly a century ago, six academic institutions joined each other in Houston, Texas. Since that time, they've developed to become one of the leading collegiate athletic associations in the world. The Southwestern Athletic Conference. Be a part of history. Be a part of the SWAC experience. Stand and be counted among the best in academics, athletics, music, stewardship. We are proud of our past and value our traditions. We are the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Honor the heritage. 6-2 advantage, a reminder that this game has its sponsors. Today's SWAC Digital Network broadcast brought to you by Toyota. Also brought to you by the Home Depot, Russell Athletic, Nike, and Coca-Cola. Grammar's going to have to try to score some points from the free throw line because right now they're shooting only 20%. They're, they're one from six from the floor. So, uh, and then on top of that, they get the ball stuck on top of the basket. So <laughs> things just not going well for Grammar right now. You know, I had never seen a free throw stuck between the rim and the window until about a week ago. I was doing a JUCO game, and it happened. And here we are, 38 years, never see it. 
Have you seen it twice in two weeks? Yep. Robs the lid on that end of the floor. Prairie View has great ball movement. They're moving the basketball from side to side. They're going to get it from low on his shoulder. Wesley Afolan, who is a 6'7 junior from Houston, Texas, now in the lineup. Love doing basketball at the Baby Dome because the atmosphere, the dome, yeah. the hardwood, the arena, but now you like it even better because you got those, those <laughs> stats right there. Here. Right, right. Modern technology at its finest. Yep. Grambling has it picked up by Green. Not sure what the buzzer was for, but there's a pull up by Scott and there's a foul on the floor. I guess that was an inadvertent buzzer from the scores table. Right. It didn't stop Scott, though. Scott knew where he wanted to go, and that was to the basket. He's being aggressive tonight. Non-shooting foul. It was prior to Scott shooting. Grammys changing their defense. They're going to throw a little zone at him now and see if they can uh, slow him down. Scott missing on the three. Isaiah Patterson now in the lineup of Vivian, Louisiana products. Off Haygood and out. Almost another Grammys turnover, which would have been a live ball turnover. We mentioned the fact that Haygood is a Pensacola product. So, too, is the head coach at Prairie View A&M, Byron Rim. He is from Pensacola, Florida, as well. A lot of good things coming out of Prairie View, huh? Out of, out of uh, Pensacola. And Prairie View. Yes. <laughs> Shine. Just outside the lane, no good. Scott's got it, looks around, fires down the floor. Haygood with it. Low scoring thus far. If you stay low scoring, who's it favor? Well, I think it's in uh, Gramlin's favor if it's a low scoring game. Hey, good pulls up at the elbow. York will try the long range three. It's no good. Cormier heads the other way. Shine. Stripped away, tried to get it back, ran into his teammate Williams. That was the reason he couldn't get it back. Hey, good. Back to York for the left-handed jam. And, and that's what happens when you have a live ball turnover. That's what Coach Walker was screaming about yesterday in, uh, in practice. You know, that he kept going over, fellas, we cannot turn the ball over. We cannot have live ball turnovers. When you do, this is the end result. They turn that basketball over at the top of the key. Prairie View's pushing it down the floor. They hit the trail, man. And he goes airborne for one, one big one for the Texas. Texas two-step. <laughs> Eight to advantage, Prairie View A&M. Neither one of these teams has won back-to-back -back games this year. Prairie View, of course, beat Jackson State on Saturday, so an opportunity for them to win back-to-back -back games. The two lone wins for Grambling thus far in the season were against non-conference foes and smaller colleges. Right, right. But a win is a win, and, and they, they're, they're looking to taste a victory. But Coach Walker knew when he took over that this was this would not be an easy task. Patterson missing on the three. Haygood rips it down. Scott with the easy two. Right now they're getting beat in transition. They're not getting back. They're not getting enough people back to stop the basketball and defend it. Lance to the sidelines by Cormier as he makes his trip across midcourt. Brown, fade away, no good, York's got it. Scott, over it goes to Jaron Johnson, who was a 6'3 sophomore from Dallas, Texas. That was a great, that was a great footwork by the big guy. Regis backed his, backed his man down, 
He did the reverse pivot and put it up off the glass. That's a good power move by a big guy. On Wukamuche, 6'10", listed at 225. I'm thinking he might be a few pounds over the 225. He's an intimidating figure in the low post and winds up with two. Right. But that's, that's what Prairie View needs. They need some baskets down in the paint, and he's the guy that can give it to them. He looked real good on that move. Rebound grabbed by Patterson off the miss. Grambling's only shooting 12%. They're one for eight, and then they just turn it over again. And it Coach, results in a point, a couple Coach, of points on the other end by Johnson. Coach is going to have to get another timeout. His team is not, they're not getting the stuff done that, that uh, they worked on in practice yesterday. Sponsors for tonight's coverage of Prairie View A&M and Grambling State include Toyota. Also brought to you by Nike. And another sponsor of tonight's coverage between the Panthers and the Tigers of Grambling. It is Home Depot. Home Depot, by the way, you know, that's kind of a, that's like the old general store. Oh yeah. You can oh, find yeah. just about anything you need at Home Depot. <laughs> and Russell Athletics, plus Toyota. Want to drive a quality car, you need to drive a Toyota. And you want some good looking stuff? Russell Athletics, as a matter of fact, we've got some stuff with that swack emblem on it from right. Russell Athletics. Russell does a very good job in athletic apparel. Grambling State's got to get busy here. It's a 14-2. They're only shooting 12% uh, from the floor. They have already have seven turnovers, and that was almost number eight. Just got the fingertips of Johnson, or otherwise it would be turnover number eight. Timeout on the floor. 11.57 left to play in the half. Already a commanding Panthers lead. Started my Camry, went to the auction, won a storage locker, found an old guitar. Tracked down the previous owner. Reunited them. Hit the jackpot. The bold new Camry. One bold choice leads to another. Toyota, let's go places. Toyota Swag Basketball Tournament in Houston, Texas. Five days of nonstop action, and it all goes down. March 10th through the 14th, the swag is driven by passion and motivated by pride. Because in the swag, history will be made. We do it for the love of the game. Visit www.swaghoops.org. 11.57, left in half number one, Prairie View A&M. The ladies, not a particularly hospitable host to Grambling. They won by a big margin. And now the men planning on doing the same, but it's very early. However, the very early double-digit advantage belongs to the home team. Right. I think Grambling has to get, they got to get a a, the ball to go in the basket in order for them to feel good about themselves. Right now they're struggling to get to make a basket in, and uh, in fact, Shine is only taking two shots along with Brown. They got to get more shots in the, in the air. Scott is on a countdown to hit a thousand career points. Coming in needed 28, and thus far he's got six, so 22 away from a 1,000 point career for Scott. Prairie View thought they had another turnover. They Coming out of that timeout, Prairie View messed Grambling up. They came out in the zone defense. Before the timeout, they played exclusively man. Is 
Foul committed by Johnson. Patterson was able to hit that three. Maybe that'll give them a little life. Scott out front to Haygood. And Scott from the corner. Short. Ooh. Wow. Coach Walker didn't like that call. He thought they hit his. He thought they had a good block down on, the, on that uh, shot in the paint. We just did a good job going up and rebounding in traffic. Williams picking up the foul. Kyle thought he had all ball. Kyle is one of his, not only is he a good basketball player, this kid had a 4.0 last semester. In fact, Grambling's been going through a lot with his APR. But Coach Walker's proud of the fact that he's got eight kids who have 3.0 or better. And I think that's amazing when it comes to basketball. Very much so. Yep. And I looked at the replay, and I'm not sure that Kyle William, Williams doesn't have a valid argument. I'm not sure he got a piece of on Wukamuche. Right. Coach Walker still doesn't think he fouled him. Grambling's got to run some good offense here and get a good shot to ease their way back in this game. Cormier able to track it down. From outside of the arc, Brown. And we're going the other way as Cormier touched it last. John Briscoe in the lineup now, a 5'11 senior from Longview, Texas. Briscoe, despite the fact coming off the bench, has put up some pretty gaudy numbers. And uh, during that four game stretch, especially when Scott was out, Briscoe's been a mainstay. Right, Briscoe's been doing pretty good for uh, Prairie View. He's averaging 11 points a game coming off the bench. Shot clock at two, and it is dropped in prior to the shot clock buzzer, buzzer by Johnson. Johnson put that one in right at the buzzer. Patterson, three of his own. Back to back threes for Patterson. Maybe that'll get him started. Johnson missing on that three. Williams coming down with the rebound, hands it over to Cormier. He's already, he's tired. Williams is looking to the bench. He wants some help. Another turnover. They're denied, they're putting all that pressure on Shine. Player coming in is not for Williams, it's for Prairie View. That's Avery Lomax, the 5'9 junior from DeSoto, Texas. Yeah, Williams has been over hands on his hips. He's looking, he, he, he wants a break. But I don't think Coach Walker can afford to take him out right now. Karim York checking back in as well for the Panthers, leading it by 10. They've led by as much as 13. Briscoe over to Lomax. Scott with a no look inside. It winds up out of the hands of uh, Fola Yeon. And they're going to get that foul. They'll get that foul on Shine. Wow, that's two, two fouls on their best player. Still nine minutes to go in the first half. And they're playing man to man. That's going to put Coach in a tough situation. Wesley wasn't able to put that shot down. I told you earlier, I think he's like a 67% free throw shooter, but. Right now shooting 25%, one of four. Williams looked at the sidelines. As a new Tiger comes in, Freeman thinking it might be he that gets the break, but 
But he's staying out there. Patterson would not have an opportunity to get it to Freeman, who was waiting back door. It's stolen away. Lomax underneath. Easy two on the finger roll. Offelin makes it a 21-8 lead. Opposite side, Patterson. Freeman leaning in off the glass, off the rim for two. Good move to the basket by Freeman. Prairie View's applying a lot of pressure on the perimeter. Lomax to York. From the corner, Briscoe. And it's Cormier with a rebound. One done. Panthers head the other way. Lomax for three. Rainbow Ooh. shot misses, wow. but the follow up's there. They, 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 they missed the push then. Inside, eight minutes left in the half. Cormier trying to trap him, gets rid of him in the corner. Briscoe got part of that one. But the official apparently said Briscoe got more than a piece of the basket, Paul. Yeah, it, you can see, you can see the push that Coach Walker was talking about. And you agreed, I think. Oh yes. 23-10, Panthers with the advantage. Game two of our twin bill on Martin Luther King Day. Nearly a century ago, six academic institutions joined each other in Houston, Texas to form a sturdy, spirited association. Since that time, they've developed to become one of the leading collegiate athletic associations in the world, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. From the southeastern region of the United States in Alabama to the second largest state in the country in Texas, the parishes of Louisiana through the Mississippi River and the natural state of Arkansas, students from all over the world demonstrate the ability to perform, achieve, and excel in scholastic activities. Be a part of history. Be a part of the SWAC experience. Stand and be counted among the best in academics, athletics, music, stewardship, Create your world of contacts and friendships that last a lifetime. We are proud of our past and value our traditions. We will always carry a spirit of respect and competition. We are the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Honor the heritage. 13-point advantage, Prairie View A&M. They are number one in the SWAC in three-point field goal defense. Holding teams to 30% shooting or less from behind the arc, and they're taking on a Grambling State squad that has trouble scoring anyway. That's probably not a good combo for the Tigers. Right, that's why they only shoot 28%. But right now, it's a numbers game. Uh, Prairie View has played 10 players. Grambling has only been able to get eight on the floor. Williams has been wanting to come out of the game for the last three minutes. <laughs> and uh, Coach is, is ignoring him. And, you know, I've been in that situation before where a kid was playing so well and he got tired, I didn't want to take him out of the game. And you just, you turn your back when they raise their hand to come out. And, was and it that's the right? What, yeah, in, in, in my case, it worked out for me because I used timeouts and other things to get him rest. I couldn't afford to take him off the floor. His is a number crunch. I, I think with them coming off the APR, uh, they don't have a, a very many scholarship players. In fact, I only think they have eight scholarship players. Scott out front to Briscoe. We talked about Prairie View A&M being good defending the three-point shots. It might be because in practice they're defending against guys that are pretty good at shooting three-pointers like Briscoe. And Scott brings it inside. It is tipped out of bounds off of York. Gremlin went to the zone then. That'll help, that'll help Williams get some rest because he has to exert more energy when he's chasing the guy 
and, and pushing him around in the man-to-man. -man. So that was a good move on Coach Walker's part to help preserve the, uh, his, his uh, biggest player on the floor. Anwukamuche back into the lineup for the Panthers. Trying to get it over to Williams, and Williams couldn't hang on. Is that, that tired, Williams? Yes, I, I think that he he fumbled that basketball because he's tired. You see, he's not he's not moving very well, going down the floor. He's laboring because he's been on the floor for quite some time. And they're up to nine turnovers already. We're still in the first half. Hey, good walking it down the floor. I've noticed how Hey, good. You can just see he's. He's a guy that looks to feed to somebody else. He just doesn't even look for the shot immediately. Right. That's good. And Coach Rim says that when they play together, that's when his team is at his best. Cormier with a steal. Bounce pass. Freeman. Got the underneath of the rim. Wow. Then they threw the outlet away. Did a great job defensively, and then we threw, threw away the outlet. You talked earlier about a low scoring game favoring Grambling. They average 48 offensively per game. So you definitely want to hold the opposition below what you typically score. Right, but with the way uh, Prairie View started this game, they're going to be in trouble tonight. Freeman bringing it inside. Second try good for Freeman. Good Offensive rebound again. Johnson misfiring, but York gets it back. Ten point Panther lead inside five and a half to go. Half number one. Over to York. Scott from the corner. Last two trips down the floor, the zone has worked for him. Patterson, 4-3. They need to be looking for Patterson now. That's his third one of the night. Because Rim had to get a timeout after that one because he, he was wide open. He already hit two early in the game. You don't want him to get started. He might be a street shooter. And the fact that they were down by 13, and you got to say, Hats off to Grambling from the perspective they have not gotten discouraged by the double-digit lead early. They're fighting, and they're now back to within seven. But that's what one of the things Sean Walker was talking about yesterday. He said, Coach, despite everything that's going on, my kids haven't given up. You know, they still fight hard. He said he's still pleased with their effort. The effort in practice, the effort in game. The only game he, he was discouraged at this year was when they played Alabama in there. Other than that, they've been in every basketball game because they play hard. Lost to Alabama State by eight, lost to Southern by six, lost to Texas Southern by four. And these are all teams at the top of the league. Down by seven now as Prairie View A&M brings it down the floor as we get close to the five-minute mark. Now they're shooting 35%. Remember at one time they was only shooting 11% from the floor. Now the turnover bug has hit Prairie View. That's their fourth. But they still need six more to catch up with Grambling if they want to win the turnover battle. And Grambling needs seven more if they want to catch up with <laughs> the Panthers in the scoring battle. Yep. They find Mr. Patterson, the way he's been shooting, they might catch up in a hurry. Freeman from the perimeter. And all of a sudden, it's a five-point game. Hey, good. But they didn't get back. Transition defense. <clears throat> I think Grandin has a problem with speed is on the floor. Patterson picking up his first foul. It is the sixth charged to Grambling. Hey, good's only a 57% free throw shooter, but he looked good on that one.
And it goes to Cormier. High off the glass for two. Hey, good into the paint. Same thing. They're not getting back. They're not getting back, and they're not stopping the ball. And that, and that has gotten Coach walk up off the bench. You got to stop the ball, but first of all, you got to get back. He's telling them now you got to turn and run, and, and and he's telling them right. But they're not. I don't think they have picked up Prairie View's team speed. He good. Uh, he's not shooting like uh, like he's a 57 percent free throw shooter. Been perfect thus far. Yeah. Two for two tonight. Six to 174 pound senior. After a couple of years in the GCAA, now a couple of years. In the SWAC. Gremlin had to take Brown out because he just picked up his second foul. So you got Brown and Shine over on the bench in foul trouble. Are you sure those figures are right on that 57% <laughs> point? These shots by Haygood aren't anything but good. They're catching yep. nothing but net. Williams over to Cormier. Whoa. This contact, it's a defensive foul. Both referees, two referees had the same call, so to me that means it, it was a good call. Got the penetration. Yeah, he's moving. He's moving before he even got there. Great call by the officials. Since you've left coaching and uh, moved into broadcasting, are the officials right more often? I like them a whole lot better. <laughs> Chase is shooting 61% from the free throw line. And at the guard spot, you want your guards to shoot a little bit better than that because you're having the ball so much. Zachary Hamilton checking into the lineup for the Panthers. And it's Hamilton that comes down with the rebound off the miss on the second shot from Cormier. Walker said he would change his defenses up a lot, try to get them off balance, and he's doing that. Into the corner, it goes to Haygood. Hamilton to the low post one, and at Haygood instead out front to their playmaker and score, Scott. Haygood tries the three. Got it just prior to the shot clock expiring, and when he caught the rim, set the new shot clock after the rebound by Prairie View. Into the corner, Scott brings it baseline. Reverse is true for Scott. Scott's doing the things he needs to do to lead his team. That was a great baseline drive. Good pass, better defense. Althamer will bring it in from the baseline, the Jonesboro, Louisiana product. <laughs> Timeout with a little less than three to go. 30-21. It's the Panthers on top. Started my Camry. Went to the auction. Won a storage locker. Found an old guitar. Tracked down the previous owner. Reunited them. Hit the jackpot.
The bold new Camry. One bold choice leads to another. Toyota, let's go places. Prairie View and in University is about the students. Students don't just come here for the education. They come for the faculty, for the creativity, the camaraderie, an excellent standard of living, and the school spirit. They come here to gain something profound and to give something back. Students come for the tradition of excellence. This is Prairie View and in University. Our tradition, your opportunity. Two forty-two left to play in the half. A nine-point Prairie View a and lead coach. If it weren't for Isaiah Patterson, Grambling would be in a world of hurt right now. Right, but they got to feel good about themselves because after the, you know when they started this basketball game out, they couldn't buy a basket, so they're e easing their way back into this game. And one of the things that's helping them, Prairie View is doing one of the things that Coach Rim didn't want them to do. They have already taken 11 threes in their one for 11. So that's giving Grambling more opportunities with the basketball. Walked before Hamilton got a piece of Althamer from the backside. Another turnover. Hey, good with a glance to the sidelines. Byron Rim barking out directions before he gets rid of it with a pass. Gets it back top of the key, looks in the direction of Hamilton, but instead goes the opposite way to Green. Hey, good foul on the floor. Colmier got him before he made the shot. Trey has been real aggressive today, and that and that that's really helping Prairie View. He's going back to the line where he's three for three today. All you got to do to start shooting is for me to say you don't. <laughs> I think I mentioned that he just didn't look to shoot much, and he's been shooting ever since. There's where you want to make the free throws on the front end of the one and one, but Haygood did not. Prairie View still coming with their pressure. They had a lot of success in making them turn it over. Althimer. Foul and will head to the stripe. Hamilton picking up the foul. Six to 180 pound junior Jonesboro, Louisiana is home. That and he's gentleman only, you see there. And he's only shooting 36% from the free throw line. And he shot him like that too. A miniature sky hook wouldn't drop for Freeman. Hey, good on the other end. Good block by Williams. <clears throat> he blocked that one standing flat footed. Just got his hands up. Shot clock at 15. Hey, good over to Scott. Trying to bring it back door to Hamilton. It goes out. Last got a Tiger. Panthers will have 11 on the shot clock. And now a timeout. Timeout Prairie What's the timeout for? You got 11 seconds showing on the shot clock, but it looked like Byron Rim. That was a definitive. I got something to tell you guys. Get over here. He's, he's going he's to drop a specific play that he wants. Because normally, at this juncture of the half, you would think this would be his 30 seconds that he would be losing. But he's already he's already used the 30 seconds early in the game, so there's not one for him to, to, to lose. And I hope he didn't forget that. But I think he wants to run a specific play on this out of bounds play. By the way, when you leave the home and you leave the business, doesn't mean you have to leave the game behind. You can, of course, download the SWAC mobile app so you can dial up the SWAC 
Check out what's going on in all the conferences and all the sports anytime, anywhere. Swag Mobile app. Be sure to go to the website of swag.org and download yours today. Let's see what Coach Rim has dialed up. I'm thinking Scott is going to get a shot at this. He's got eight in the first half. Yep, that's a Scott shot, but it was a Scott shot because the shot clock. That was going down. Yep. He shot that one beyond the NBA three. Patterson leading score for Grambling gets it over to Cormier. Yeah, Grambling has to, uh, they need to score to go into the half to give themselves some momentum, but they turn it over again. And that's going to be turnover number 12 for them. <clears throat> and good over to Scott. Differential between game and shot clock about four seconds. Right. And I, I think uh, Prayer View probably, well, just when I thought they were going to take it down, they get a shot off. And it's up a three point variety from Jacoby Green. Freeman. Another turnover. Apparently thought that Williams was breaking towards the hoop. He didn't. They got it down to single digits. Now Prairie View is. They'll definitely get the last shot. Hamilton's three. Banks it in. Good half for Prairie View. 15 point lead, largest lead of the ball game, and it comes after the lead went from 13 to 5. Now it is back up to 15. And Jasher Cox, grabbing coach Byron Rim, on his way to the locker room. So we will hear in just a matter of moments uh, get the comments of Jasher and Byron Rim. All right, coach. Solid first half. Talk about it. Well, I mean, we did the little stuff we had to do. Uh, we're not done open shots. Uh, we're trying to pull them out their zone so we can get our man and, and get some movement going. But uh, we're moving the ball. We're knocking down shots. You've done a very good job of controlling a Tory shine in the first half. How have you done so? Well, we're just keeping people on and We're staying in the zone and we're keeping our eye on them. So uh, we're not respecting some of their shooters right now. So we're kind of uh, cheating to him a little bit. So until they knock down some shots, then we'll, we'll get to our regular zone. But until then, we're going to stay on him and make sure he doesn't wake up. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Thanks a lot. All right, guys. Thanks very much. All right. Thank you, Jasher. Halftime. Panthers lead it. Prairie View and in University is about the students. Students don't just come here for the education. They come for the faculty, for the creativity, the camaraderie, an excellent standard of living, and the school spirit. They come here to gain something profound and to give something back. Students come for the tradition of excellence. This is Prairie View and m University. Our tradition, your opportunity. Recognized for our tremendous world-famed marching band, our students excel in the classroom and on the field. We offer a variety of online and on-campus academic programs, including the sciences, math, business, criminal justice, nursing, mass communications, and performing and visual arts. Study and relax in apartment-style quarters or bungalows at our recently acquired West Campus. Rambling State University, enhancing academic profiles since 1901. Toyota Swag Basketball Tournament in Houston, Texas. Five days of nonstop action, and it all goes down. March 10th through the 14th, the swag is driven by passion and motivated by pride. Because in the swag, history will be made. We do it for the love of the game. Visit www.swaghoops.org. 
started my Camry, went to the auction, won a storage locker, found an old guitar. Track down the previous owner. Reunited them. Hit the jackpot. The bold new Camry. One bold choice leads to another. Toyota, let's go places. It is halftime, Panthers on top. They've got the advantage by 15 here at the half. And coach, what do they do to maintain that lead? How do they keep that advantage? Because if you'll recall in the first half, they had a 13 point lead that was cut to five. Right, but what they got in their favor tonight is defense. They're, they're forcing turnovers after turnovers. They have, they forced 12 turnovers in that half. As long as Prairie View comes out and keeps up the same pressure, I think they're gonna be okay. Uh, their defense has forced Grambling into taking bad shots, and at the same time, they're getting live ball turnovers where they're able to run out and score in transition. And I think that's what has given Prairie View the lead, and with the way they, they Grambling has not solved the defense, so I think they'll be okay in the second half by continuing that pressure. Nice crowd on hand here at the Baby Dome, and I don't think there's a single individual surprised that Montrell Scott is the guy who led the charge in the first half. But to be honest with you, it's more Montrell has eight points, and he's the guy that we, we, hot, we highlighted at the beginning of the game, and he's lived up to his building. Uh, Montrell's a great player. He's one of the leaders coming back for this team, and he's getting it done on the floor. He's doing a lot of different things. Not only is he scoring, he's also rebounding for him, so he's going to have to a great first half so far. We talked about in pregame the fact that you want to rise out of the bottom of the current standing so that when you get to tournament time, you're not playing those one or two teams. Right. So let's talk about the championship, the event that happens in Houston, the Toyota Center, 10th through the 14th. That is a heck of an event. Great venue, great venue uh, for the SWAC tournament to be in. It was an awesome crowd last year. I think the people that came out last year enjoyed themselves. They'll be back. We just need to add some more fans to them. I, I think Houston has been a great host, they're, they're, and they're looking forward to another great year. I love, by the way, the concept of beyond the rim because it's beyond just basketball. We go on to music, the old school concert, which is a newer school than you I remember. <laughs> but what a great concert with Salt and Pepper right, and Salt, 12. Salt and Pepper 112. They're going to bring the old school people out. And uh, that's going to be a, a great time. The young people can relate to, to the old school people also. So it's going to be a great atmosphere. And, of course, uh, I mentioned previously with a new Geico commercial that features salt and pepper, they kind of become mainstream now yeah, once yeah. again. So Right. They're relevant. So that, that's why I think we'll, it'll be a nice turnout for that concert. Great concert, great event beyond the rim. It happens at the Toyota Center there in Houston, Texas, and it happens the 10th through the 14th. Be sure to check out tickets. Get them now. Swag.org or swaghoops.org. Toyota Swag Basketball Tournament in Houston, Texas. Five days of non-stop action, and it all goes down. March 10th through the 14th, the swag is driven by passion and motivated by pride. Because in the swag, history will be made. We do it for the love of the game. Visit www.swaghoops.org. Started my Camry, went to the auction, won a storage locker, found an old guitar. Tracked down the previous owner. Reunited them. Hit the jackpot. The bold new Camry. One bold choice leads to another. Toyota, let's go places. 
nearly a century ago. Six academic institutions joined each other in Houston, Texas to form a sturdy, spirited association. Since that time, they've developed to become one of the leading collegiate athletic associations in the world, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. From the southeastern region of the United States in Alabama to the second largest state in the country in Texas, the parishes of Louisiana through the Mississippi River and the natural state of Arkansas, students from all over the world demonstrate the ability to perform, achieve, and excel in scholastic activities. Be a part of history. Be a part of the SWAC experience. Stand and be counted among the best in academics, athletics, music, stewardship, Create your world of contacts and friendships that last a lifetime. We are proud of our past and value our traditions. We will always carry a spirit of respect and competition. We are the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Honor the heritage. Monday, January 19th, 2015. We are at the Baby Dome on the campus of Prairie View a and a very special day, the day in which we honor the legacy, the life of Martin Luther King. We celebrate the life and legacy of a man who brought hope and healing to America, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. We commemorate as well the timeless values he taught us through his example, the values of courage, truth, justice, compassion, dignity, humility, and service that so radiantly defined Dr. King's character and empowered his leadership. On this holiday, we commemorate the universal, unconditional love, forgiveness, and nonviolence that empowered his revolutionary spirit. Right, and Robert, I think Dr. Dr. King uh, epitomized peace. I mean, he, he, his legacy will be there forever because he told us that you can make change. Change can come, and you can do it peacefully. And that's what he lived to do, and his movement is still going on today. Uh, because you can affect change, and you can do it peacefully, and I think that was a great, great concept. And indeed, we remember Martin Luther King Jr. Next game for Swag Digital Network happens on the 7th of February. What a dandy on the 7th as we head to Texas Southern, and Prairie View A&M comes to town. So it's the Panthers, it's Texas Southern tangling for a night of basketball. And if you haven't ever been to the uh, physical and health education center there at Texas Southern? Oh, yes. Great, great venue, one of the best venues in the SWAC. And uh, it'll be rocking, and it'll be full because it's the Hatfields versus the McCoys, and everybody will be there. And these two teams have played some Donnie Brooks the last uh, five or six years. I mean, the games have come down to the last minute. Remember, we had a great game here last year with Prairie View winning toward the end. Uh, with some controversy after they stopped Big Murray. Then remember they went to three overtimes at Texas Southern before Murray and his team was able to win that game. So I look I look forward to that. That's going to be a great contest. Texas Southern is right there among the top, among the leaders in the conference standings. They are number two, a half game behind Alabama State as you take a look at the rest of the conference standings as well. Prairie View A&M, if they hang on and win this thing, they move up to that mid part of the pack. Right, and that's what they're trying to do. Uh, Prairie View wants to move up. You know, coming into the season, uh, Coach Rim said he thought they had some momentum after making it all the way to the conference tournament championship. So they're looking forward, he was looking forward to this season. So they still got an opportunity to, to climb up because they can still, they're still playing people in front of them, but they got to get this game tonight. Grambling State to come out of the bottom of the sweller, uh, the cellar rather. They've got to obviously come back in the second half. What about the performance of Mr. Shine in half number one? Well, Shine got into early foul trouble, so he wasn't that effective. He got those two fouls early, and Coach, had, Coach Walker had to sit him down. But in order for Grambling to come back, they got to value the basketball. There are too many turnovers. Those 12 turnovers, and they haven't, these are, I keep saying it. You cannot turn the ball over when the ball is live. You, you, it's got to be a dead ball turnover so you can set your defense. The points off of turnovers are killing them tonight. And, and if they want to get back in this game, number one, they got to play better defense and they got to value that basketball. Speaking of shine in the first half, one rebound, two fouls, no points, no assists, no blocks, no steals in 11 minutes of playing time. Mr. Shine didn't shine in the first half, but he's got another 20 minutes. And if things in the next 20 minutes of this one are anything like the rest of his season thus far, 
Uh, He'll put on a show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 36-21, Panthers at the half. Prairie View a and University is about the students. Students don't just come here for the education. They come for the faculty, for the creativity, the camaraderie, an excellent standard of living, and the school spirit. They come here to gain something profound and to give something back. Students come for the tradition of excellence. This is Prairie View a and University. Our tradition, your opportunity. Recognized for our tremendous world-famed marching band, our students excel in the classroom and on the field. We offer a variety of online and on-campus academic programs, including the sciences, math, business, criminal justice, nursing, mass communications, and performing and visual arts. Study and relax in apartment-style quarters or bungalows at our recently acquired West Campus. Rambling State University enhancing academic profiles since 1901. Nearly a century ago, six academic institutions joined each other in Houston, Texas to form a sturdy, spirited association. Since that time, they've developed to become one of the leading collegiate athletic associations in the world, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. From the southeastern region of the United States in Alabama to the second largest state in the country in Texas, the parishes of Louisiana through the Mississippi River and the natural state of Arkansas, Students from all over the world demonstrate the ability to perform, achieve, and excel in scholastic activities. Be a part of history. Be a part of the SWAC experience. Stand and be counted among the best in academics, athletics, music, stewardship. Create your world of contacts and friendships that last a lifetime. We are proud of our past and value our traditions. We will always carry a spirit of respect and competition. We are the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Honor the heritage. There are some moments you spend your life preparing for. Not to prove them wrong, but yourself right. So you work harder, drive stronger. And before you know it, you didn't just beat the game. Who is that? Don't know, but he's going places. You changed it. Hey, son, ready for the interview? I got this. Introducing the 2014 Next Generation Corolla. Toyota, let's go places. 36-21 advantage, Prairie View a &M as we get set for second half action. And it'll start right here in front of our broadcast booth as York will handle the honors. Grambling, what do they got to do to get back into this? We talked about what Shine's got to do. He's got to pick up the game, obviously. What about Grambling? Well, Grambling's got to pick up the pressure. They got to force some turnovers. And then they've got to find, they need to go to Patterson until Shine can get going in this basketball game. Patterson was the only person that was scoring in the first half. So we've got to, they got to be ready. Not sure what the. I think they're waiting for him to get the ball rack off the floor. That could yep. be an issue. It is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you only need one of those, not about 12 or 14. Grambling's out in this man-to-man, -man, so hopefully they can pick up uh, uh, be able to apply more pressure this half. Hey, good, able to bring it top of the key into the corner. It goes to Scott. Eight points in the first half. Needed 28 to hit 1,000 coming in. Now he needs just 18. <laughs> Nice baseline jumper. He went away from the double team and pulled up on the baseline. Top of the key, shine. shine. <laughs> Grambling's been looking for that since the first half. First basket for their leading score. York left side of the rim. I make that the lane, kicked it outside of the York. Shines got to be careful this half not to pick up a silly foul. On Wukamuche trying to jam it in, got fouled. And it was Williams that picked up his second foul. Uh, 
Regis on Okamuche, Missouri City in Texas. That's where he calls home. Got him on the forearm, Williams. Committing his second foul, and Williams will get that breather, but it comes at a time in which he really didn't need the breather. He wanted that in the first half. Right. <laughs> second foul's got him grabbing a chair here in the second half. So next time he'll remember if he wants to go to the bench, go ahead and foul. <laughs> Brown and Cormier leans in, got the roll. It's a good drive, good drive. They didn't, defense didn't stop the penetration, so he kept going to the basket. Cormier going the other way. Brown got turned around a bit, couldn't hang on. York's got it. Wow, both teams trading turnovers. It's going to be another one if they're not careful. Freeman for two. Good move with his offhand. Freeman's a left, and he scooped that one up with his right. Quickly grambling, cutting into the advantage. Prairie View led it by 15 at the half. Now 11. The Prairie View on the offensive end, they got to do the same things they did in the first half. They can't be satisfied with the lead and think that the clock is going to milk his way down because they'll lose all the momentum. Right now, Gramlin, could that drive a help? But Gramlin has the momentum right now. Another foul committed. So Cobra Green came into this game shooting 76% from the line. Mark Gray picking up the personal. Gray did not play in the first half. Right. I I wanted to bring that up, but I, I didn't know why, because he has been a part of their attack all uh, year. So that was I guarantee it's a coach's decision, and we probably don't know. He's probably not going to tell us why, but I guarantee it's a coach's decision. His absence. What did it mean in the first half? His presence, what does it mean in half number two? Well, he, he's the second leading scorer, so they, they can get some more points. Freeman fouled. And it's Anwukamuche, guilty of the personal. See, one thing, one thing about Coach Walker now, from talking to him last night, he believes in discipline because there were two other guys that could have returned and played for Grambling this year, Rose and one of the other starters from last year, but they didn't follow the rules, and he, he got rid of them. He dismissed them from the team. And uh, he knows that he has an uphill battle. He's got to do everything the right way in order to keep Grambling from going back uh, to having any problems with that APR. But he wants to build a program. He's going to do it with the, on the recruiting trail. And I got no problems with having discipline as the foundation of a pretty good team. Right, right. I, that, that, to me, that's the only way you can be successful. That's the only way you can build a program. You got to have discipline. And I admire him. When he, I had a great conversation with him last night, and some of the things that he's got in store for the program, all, all of the Grand Knights have to do is give him time. Quick trip to the Prairie View into the floor, and they threw it away quickly. Cormier drew a lot of attention, able to kick it over to Freeman, and Freeman wow. stepped out of bounds. Can't keep having these turnovers. They're up to 15 now. But they're, hey, shoot, they're shooting the ball better, Robert. Uh, they're up to 45% from the floor, 44% from three points. So Grambling, uh, they're, they're inching their way. They're, they're gaining some confidence. Hamilton inside on Wukamuche. We just went up strong and laid that one in. Brown over to Shine. Oh, 
Lost it, bringing it inside. Recovered by Green and taken right back by Brown. Cormier for two. See, Gramlin is showing some fight. On the other end, Green in and out. That's great with a rebound. And that's the, that's the other rebounder they missed in that first half. Shine missing on the three. Freeman got the loose ball, spin move. On Wukamuche with the rebound. And there's a 30 second timeout. It is charged to Prairie View AM and now turned into a full timeout because it is a media timeout. So we'll take timeout with him. 11 point lead for the Panthers at the Baby Dome in the Lone Star State. Now the next dead ball. Prairie View a and University is about the students. Students don't just come here for the education. They come for the faculty, for the creativity, the camaraderie, an excellent standard of living, and the school spirit. They come here to gain something profound and to give something back. Students come for the tradition of excellence. This is Prairie View a and University. Our tradition, your opportunity. Recognized for our tremendous world-famed marching band, our students excel in the classroom and on the field. We offer a variety of online and on-campus academic programs, including the sciences, math, business, criminal justice, nursing, mass communications, and performing and visual arts. Study and relax in apartment-style quarters or bungalows at our recently acquired West Campus. Rambling State University enhancing academic profiles since 1901. 43-32 advantage as action resumes. Hey, good in possession. Hey, good will play a lot of times, a lot of minutes on the floor as it's brought baseline by Johnson. Johnson for two. He'll typically spend about 33 minutes on the floor, and so will Scott. Right. Uh, Robert, hey, hey, good is really getting it, penetrating and getting into the meat of the defense, and he's dropping off some nice dimes. Cormier lost it. Johnson back over to Haygood. Nothing there, and he'll bring it back out. He says, let you do it, and missed the jam, but there was a reason, and apparently Gray, I'm assuming, committed the foul. Let's see. And it is Gray. Gray charged with a personal. Free throws will come after the timeout. 45-32 Panthers. Nearly a century ago, six academic institutions joined each other in Houston, Texas. Since that time, they've developed to become one of the leading collegiate athletic associations in the world, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Be a part of history. Be a part of the SWAC experience. Stand and be counted among the best in academics, athletics, music, stewardship. We are proud of our past and value our traditions. We are the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Honor the heritage. 45-32 lead. Tonight's game being brought to you by, and so are all games on the SWAC Digital Network by Toyota. What a quality car. You definitely want a Toyota. Also brought to you tonight by Nike. And I think the check speaks for itself. Russell Athletics. Home of great athletic wear. Home Depot also making coverage possible. And of course another sponsor is Coca-Cola. So thank you very much you all for making our coverage possible. The SWAC Digital Network in the Lone Star State will make a return trip on the 7th of February. Then who knows what the rest of the schedule holds. By the way, we'll be in Birmingham the 22nd of February for track. 
debut coverage of SWAC track. And it happens right here in the SWAC Digital Network. Regis missed that free throw. Big guy's a 53% free throw shooter. And, and on, on tonight, he's, uh, he's two, for, two for six from the line. He's able to get that second one, and then he's going to take a break. Wesley replaces Regis in the lineup for Prairie View. I notice you're going with those first names, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smart, smart. <laughs> Cormier off the glass. <laughs> Into the corner, it is dumped inside, low post. Almost taken away, but into the bench runs Johnson. So Shine will bring it in from the far sidelines. Big, big trip down the floor for Gramlin. They, you know, they, Prairie View's taking his lead back to 12. They need to try to find a way to get it down to single digits. Whoa. A lot of contact. Hamilton to Scott. Scott off the glass. Live ball turnover. They came up behind and bumped Gray, and he turned it over. Cormier has it to Gray. Pounce pass underneath Freeman. Patterson had him in the first half, got him in the second. I think, and Coach Walker's going to get a timeout after that. Uh, they need to find Patterson. I think he's in a groove. He's not getting enough shots. How do they find him? I mean, you've got Patterson who hit the threes in the first half, and as a result, you got the Panthers stepping out, guarding him a lot tighter. Is that part of the logic? I mean, and how do you create that separation? Well, <clears throat> his teammates got to look for him. When the guards penetrate, uh, they're doing a pretty good job of trying to stop penetration so if he can count for two people he'll be open more but he's got to look for a shot he's the only one that's in a groove shine didn't get in a groove because he stayed on the bench Patterson in the first half four of five from the floor three of four from behind the arc hit on 11 points and really was carrying the load early for Grambling I remember at the 21 point barrier for Grambling he had 11 of the right, 21 right Hey, good, bringing it into the paint. Jumper missed, Patterson with the rebound. Gray bringing it to the right side of the lane, got the side of the backboard, Hamilton with the REB. Scott with 12 points out front to Haygood. Johnson pull up Jay from the short corner, short on the shot. Cormier will come down with the rebound. Shine on the other end. Shine started the second half off with a bang, the three-pointer from the top of the key, but he's been quiet again. Right, right. That's why they got to go. That's even more reason why they got to utilize Patterson. Because every night's not going to be your night, and tonight Patterson can help this team. Scott Cormier with a rebound. Into the paint. And there was a foul or a walk. Which one? It's a foul. Offensive foul. It's a great. Defense retreated. Got got there. Stood his ground. And he ran over. Cormier. Defense was already there. Outside the arc. All he had to do was stop. Great camera work, by the way, by J.T. Barrett, who's up 
in the crow's nest behind us, giving us a bird's eye view of the floor beneath. Yeah, they're doing a great job. They're doing a great job. Over to Haygood at the timeline, left side, out front. That's Briscoe back into the lineup. Johnson with a jumper for two. Johnson has good up, good elevation on that shot. It's a good looking shot. Tipped by Briscoe and went out. Briscoe pointing the other way, but I think he was the first to know that it went off he. And there's a timeout. With 11.41 to go. It's a 13-point lead, but it's been 13 before the Tigers have battled back. Will it happen again? Started my Camry. Went to the auction. Won a storage locker. Found an old guitar. Track down the previous owner. Reunited them. Hit the jackpot. The bold new Camry. One bold choice leads to another. Toyota, let's go places. Nearly a century ago, six academic institutions joined each other in Houston, Texas. Since that time, they've developed to become one of the leading collegiate athletic associations in the world, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Be a part of history. Be a part of the SWAC experience. Stand and be counted among the best in academics, athletics, music, stewardship. We are proud of our past and value our traditions. We are the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Honor the heritage. Thirteen point advantage. It was 15 and a half. So as you pointed out during the timeout, actually Grambling outscoring Prairie View A&E. Right. So far they're outscoring them 16 to 14, uh, but they're turning the ball over again, and that's that's hurting them. And then and then this game cannot come down to a free throw shooting contest because both teams are laying bricks. Uh, Patterson's the only person that's doing that's that's in a rhythm, and now. A quick timeout by Coach Rim because he's already told him not to leave Patterson. He's the only person on Grambling's team that's scoring from the perimeter, and they leave him wide open. And that's why he called a timeout, and he's taking him out to the game. Obviously, it was John Briscoe's task to hang with Patterson. He right. did not. He comes out. The, uh, now, what, the other thing is, if it comes to a free throw shooting contest, Grambling shooting 40 percent from the free throw line. Prairie View 52%. So we'll be in all night. They'll, 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 they'll be building a, a mansion on there with all these bricks. You're wanting to get to that Denny's, huh? Grab a bite to eat. You don't want to stay here. I, I, well, actually, I want to get, get in so I can go to sleep so I can get out of here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the game got a late start, for those who do not know, because the power went out during the ladies', ladies game. game. Yep. A couple of minutes into the ladies' game, I guess about four minutes to be exact into the game, half the power in the arena went out, and it took about 20 to 25 minutes to get the power back on, and then the ladies' game went a little longer anyway. Yep. So take those two components, and you got a late game for the men. Almost, but not quite. Second try good, though, for Anwukabuche. He has really improved. Uh, you know, we've been watching him for a couple of years now, and you can see the improvement. And that's, as a coach, that's all you want to see out of your player. You want to see improvement each year. Jaron Johnson charged with a foul. Oh, Freeman is, uh, he's real active in the paint. He drew that foul. Uh, he's got that left hand, but he, he will shoot it with his right also. He's being real active, and he came up from behind and got, got him across the arm. Hey, hey, hey. 
And an 11-point lead. Nearly halfway through the second half, and Grambling trimming four off what was a 15-point halftime advantage. Right, and they, they changed their defense up to come with a little, a little different kind of pressure to try to force a turnover, and also to make Prairie View use clock. Hamilton off on the three. Got to be able to rebound, though. You got to be able to rebound. Hey, good. Shine may have blocked it from the back side. They need a five. Brown. Somebody stepped out of bounds, and I think that somebody's wearing black. Another turnover. Every, every time Gramlin gets a little momentum, the turnover bug comes up and bites. Jeffkins Agimon Boudou is into the lineup, a 6'5 freshman from Staten Island, New York. Seeing his first playing time of the ball game for the Grambling Tigers. He's going deep into his bench. Avery Lomax, who had some first half minutes, gets some second half ones. That's Hamilton taking it to the glass. Brown nearly taken away. Johnson did not think he fouled Brown. The official thought he did. Grambling to bring it in from right here in front of the bench. Because Rim's changing that defense up now. He wants, wants them to come out of that zone and go get him. He's got to try to turn the tide here. Crane from the top of the key. Another offensive rebound. Ball out of bounds here to go over to uh, Gramlin. So that's another, another possession for him. Gray taking an inside and a whistle stops play. There's a technical See? on somebody. And it's on Gray. Gray, Gray's taking his frustrations out on them. I think they just called him for that tech. So not only, you know, the tech also will count as a personal foul. See if we can see what's happening. Oh, talking. I think he said, he said something to one of the Prairie View players. Referee called him. They had just had the players together under the basket, telling them to settle down and cool it. So the fish is doing a good job of making sure they stay on top of this. A couple of shots on the other end of the floor, compliments to the tech on Johnson, and now it's back into the hands of the guy who committed the foul. Got a couple of finals for you. It is Texas Southern 67-54 defeating Jackson State. And Southern a 79-55 winner over Mississippi Valley State. So Texas Southern now 5-0 and and will move up and hang out with Alabama State as the number one team in right. the SWAC. Yeah, now they're tied for first. Gray, who hit eight in a row against Oregon State this year. One of the few 1,000 percentage free throw shooters in a single game. Gets both at the line there. Prairie, Prairie View is being real patient on the offensive end now. They got to make sure that they get a good shot. Shot clock is down under five. Scott. Scott to the rescue. And the lead all of a sudden back to 15. Scott now has 14 points in this game. 
This has happened before in this ball game, by the way, where Prairie View builds the 13, the 15, maybe the 16-point lead, and Grambling narrows it. Now it's back to 15 again. Yeah, the game is getting a little chippy out there. The referees are talking to the players again uh, about all of the talk. Foul committed by Avery Lomax. Brown's a 65% free throw shooter. And in tonight, and in tonight's game, he's 0 for 1. Now that's 0 for 2 from the line. Williams checking back into the lineup for Grambling. Brown goes one of two. Johnson for two. Johnson didn't know if he wanted to shoot that or throw the lob. He chose, he changed his mind at the last minute and took the shot. Agamon Boudou underneath to Williams. Williams with an easy two. Oh, that almost took out one of the cheerleaders. One of the cheerleaders, <laughs> boy. It's, it's good that they've got great reflexes, too. <laughs> Time out on the floor, 60-47, Prairie View A&M. As the SWAC Digital Network's coverage tonight is in the Lone Star State. Prairie View a and University is about the students. Students don't just come here for the education. They come for the faculty, for the creativity, the camaraderie, an excellent standard of living, and the school spirit. They come here to gain something profound and to give something back. Students come for the tradition of excellence. This is Prairie View a and University. Our tradition, your opportunity. Go to SWAC.org and do this, download the SWAC mobile app. That way you can take game scores, you can take game information, schedules, conference standings, you name it, everything with you in the palm of your hand. SWAC on the go. Download it at SWAC.org. Inside eight to play, 60-47, 13-point lead. Patterson now with 17 to lead all scores, and the Grambling Tigers. Top scorer for Prairie View AM with 14 is Scott Johnson. Not far behind, though. A quiet 13 for Johnson. Another turnover. And now Scott with 16. Might have, went, might have got away with an extra step there. Into the paint to Williams. Freeman, hey, good with it. Got to get his head up. It missed him. And there's Hay jamming in, Ramon Brown. Got his head up at the last minute. I thought he was going to miss that break opportunity. Gray just inside midcourt. I make that uh, Haygood. Gray, by the way, is on the sidelines. Gray, who sat out the first half. Gray, who picked up the tech, <clears throat> is a Gray on the bench currently. Yep. Back over it goes to Hamilton. Had to shoot. Rebound, Freeman. Running. Has a chance to cut into this lead. Williams trying to get the follow up, but there was a foul, and that foul is on on Muche. Williams so far tonight is 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Tradition to show all jams. We had to go back and 
at that Brown one-handed shot. Williams coming to the line. 36% on the year from the free throw line. Shine coming back onto the floor. Cormier as well. Prairie View's got Green back in the lineup. One out of two is not bad. Especially when you shoot 36%. <laughs> I mean, that, that bumps the average yeah. up. Still a 12 point lead. That's not an insurmountable advantage. They got to get some stops. York comes out to set the screen. Hey, good. Wide open underneath and able to put the jam down. And it's Anwukamuche. We just went up like the, the big dog that he is and put that one down. Bounce pass into Gray, back into the lineup. Shine, got two. Shine has been very, very quiet. Yep. Just the fifth point of the game for Shine. Shine with a nice rip. And then he gets the offensive foul. Got to keep with tradition, by the way. Here's the two-hander. Oh, yes. Reads it. He got up off the floor on that one. I thought he was going to do one of those, and I'm going back to our days, the Moses Malone. Wasn't he the one that ripped the – no, it was <laughs> Dawkins, Dawkins that Dawkins, tore yeah. the goalpost down. Yep. He played yep. with Moses Malone. Correct. Green shot misses, but there's another opportunity. Rebound grabbed by York. Trey found Scott. But the problem is, Prairie View is, cannot put down a three-point shot. Williams hammered from the backside. Prairie View shoots three for 17, 16%. Three for 18, 16% from the three-point line. So the two-pointers and the free throws are the reason why they got this lead. Montrell Scott picking up his third foul of the game. It is the seventh of the half, so into the bonus. Gray is a 7-8% free throw shooter. And, uh, and tonight, he's, he's already been to the line a couple times, and he's two for two. And that perfect percentage of the line continuing for Gray. And it's yet an even more manageable deficit of 10. Right, and they needed that extra score in the first half. So whatever he did to, to warrant a half a game suspension, he, he needs to get his act together. They need him on the floor. York kicks it over to Haygood into the corner. Back over to York, the point of origin, and he drops in the three. The crowd was happy that they finally put one down. Cormier sends it over to Gray. It won't be long before this clock is a big Panther ally. Wow. Shine for the three. Shine is heating up, but it might be too late. Four possession game, three minutes, 30 seconds to go. And the Prairie View A&M squad that's 
consuming all the time they can on that shot clock. Right. They're doing, they're doing it the right way. They're, they're milking this clock. They want to take it down because you can start counting possessions now. My uh, executive producer, who is a big, I think, Pacers fan, said Reggie Miller scored eight points in eight seconds. Oh, yeah. But uh, that was Reggie Miller. Yep. 67-57. <laughs> Started my Camry, went to the auction, won a storage locker, found an old guitar. Tracked down the previous owner. Reunited them. Hit the jackpot. The bold new Camry. One bold choice leads to another. Toyota, let's go places. Toyota Swag Basketball Tournament in Houston, Texas. Five days of nonstop action, and it all goes down. March 10th through the 14th, the swag is driven by passion and motivated by pride. Because in the swag, history will be made. We do it for the love of the game. Visit www.swaghoops.org. Nearly a century ago, six academic institutions joined each other. Ten-point deficit. If you're the Tigers, it is a ten-point lead that belongs to the Panthers. 316 to go. That's not something you can't overcome, but you got to count on people like Patterson, Shine, to start hitting those threes. Right. Uh, well, Patterson has 17 points. He's five out of six from behind the arc. They need to be looking for him in transition. Shine is two out of four. So between those two guys, that's a lot of points. That, that's six, uh, seven baskets behind the three. So they need to look for him in transition and anytime they're down the floor. Hey, good, who's not supposed to be a particularly good free throw shooter, has been pretty good tonight. Right. He pr Prior to that, uh, Haygood was uh, three out of four from the line, and he came into this game being only a 67% a free throw shooter. Oh, he brought it back Spoke down. too soon. That's <laughs> kiss of death yep. for us to talk about how good something's going. Gray. Oh, that's good. They're going to get the travel first. But I think the travel may have been caused by the contact. And the contact initiated by the defense? Yes. Prayer View is being real deliberate now, so they're doing it the right way. Gramlin, on the other hand, they got to come out and get them. They need the basketball back. 11 point lead is and down to 251. They, they need possessions. Green's three misses. Grambling's got it down by 11. Patterson's open. They missed it. Gray got it that time. Now you just imagine if Gray had been on the floor in the first half mm -hmm. doing things like that. This game would be a lot closer. Wesley Uffelan charged with a foul. He comes off the floor. And it will be on Wukamuche who will check back in. Yeah, Greg gives him another body that can go inside. And he's a big, strong, strong looking person that can help him down on the block. It's an eight point game. Lots of time left to overcome an eight-point deficit. Into York. Wow. And it's, it's a big offensive rebound. Oh, yeah. Big Whoop. offensive rebound. Allows them to basically trim another half minute yeah. off the game clock if they wish. Uh, well, I, I guess he's going to play the percentages, but he's not coming out to get them. And Prairie View is content to keep it out. Now they're changing the defense. Now they, they're going in. 
They went from the zone and into their man to man. But you gave up the offensive rebound. And coach, what too is the logic? And, and I'm deferring to your uh, coaching skills and, and knowledge. If you're going to do that, why allow 15 to 18 seconds to tick off the clock? Well, personally, I wouldn't do that. Do it that way. I, I, if I'm behind, I'm going to go ahead and attack. He, he, coach has his reasons. Evidently, he doesn't feel like that that they can chase him that long, and that's why he sat back in the zone and changed the defense. But I would have been. I wanted the time. I would have come after him earlier. York missing the opportunity to cap off a three-point play. The guards are already down the floor, so he's got to let one of the fours bring it up. Uh, great. Ray bricked it up that time. Foul is charged to Jeffkins Agiman Budu. More finals in the SWAC. It is Arkansas Pine Bluff, 54 49 over Alcorn. They got their first win. Yep, picked up win number one and handed Alcorn their fourth loss in the SWAC. And then, of course, you have the two other games that wrapped up earlier. Texas Southern 67-54 over Jackson State and a 79-55 Southern win over Mississippi Valley State. And this is the only other game in progress. Four SWAC games on the 19th of January and our privilege to be here in Prairie View to bring you a fourth of the SWAC games being played tonight. Hey, good shooting with a minute 32 left. Officials to the scores table and now summonsing Sean Walker. Head coach of Grambling, Byron and Rim over on the other side going, you know, I'd kind of like to know what you're talking about, too. I think it's a legal substitution. The sub got to the table in time. And that sub was Althamer, so Althamer will. Now he has a stick. He'll head to the bench, and Gray will check back in. And Haygood continues to perform well at the line. Four possession game, 92 ticks left on the clock. Gray bringing it inside and walked with it. Yep. And it's certainly looking like with a minute 24 to play as if for the first time in the season Prairie View A&M will win back to back games. They will build upon that victory over Jackson State move up in the conference standings. Hager's hey, doing a good job of breaking this pressure. They've waited this long. They shouldn't foul now. Hey, good weaving in and out of the paint. Kicks it out front to Scott. Scott's not going to turn it loose. Another offensive rebound. Reed has been a man tonight. Grambling playing Prairie View A&M just about even in the second half. Problem is Prairie View had built the 15-point lead of the half. Yep. 
Now Coach is going to concede. He's just told his defense to get back. They're going to run the clock out on this one. Game clock, two seconds behind the shot clock. And that shot clock is down to seven, six, five. Hey, good. Hitting, or at least trying to hit the three, and then Shine will try to finish the game. Good if it goes. It doesn't go, though, but the game does. It goes into the win column for Prairie View A&M. It is loss number six in the SWAC conference play for Grambling as they remain winless in conference play. Prairie View had a great game plan. They did an outstanding job, Coach Rim. Uh, he did the things that he wanted to do tonight. He said rebounding would be a big key. They won the battle of the glass tonight. So, uh, well, I'm sorry, they did lose it, but only by two. Uh, I think coming into the game, they, they were losing them, uh, losing the battle of the glass by nine. So they did a better job tonight, and uh, they come away with a big win. It has gone final. 74-60, Panthers win it. We come back to wrap up coverage on the SWAC Digital Network of the Panthers and the Tigers after the break. Toyota SWAC Basketball Tournament in Houston, Texas. Five days of nonstop action. And it all goes down March 10th through the 14th. The swag is driven by passion and motivated by pride. Because in the swag, history will be made. We do it for the love of the game. Visit www.swaghoops.org. Started my Camry. Went to the auction. Won a storage locker. Found an old guitar. Track down the previous owner. Reunited them. Hit the jackpot. The bold new Camry. One bold choice leads to another. Toyota, let's go places. Nearly a century ago, six academic institutions joined each other in Houston, Texas to form a sturdy, spirited association. Since that time, they've developed to become one of the leading collegiate athletic associations in the world, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. From the southeastern region of the United States in Alabama to the second largest state in the country in Texas, the parishes of Louisiana through the Mississippi River and the natural state of Arkansas, Students from all over the world demonstrate the ability to perform, achieve, and excel in scholastic activities. Be a part of history. Be a part of the SWAC experience. Stand and be counted among the best in academics, athletics, music, stewardship. Create your world of contacts and friendships that last a lifetime. We are proud of our past and value our traditions. We will always carry a spirit of respect and competition. We are the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Honor the heritage. This one has gone final. It is the Panthers taking the sweep. The ladies won. The men win as well. For the men, it is a 74-60 victory over Grambling. And Coach Grambling scored the first bucket. They had their only lead with that first bucket. And after it was tied up by Prairie View A&M on a Scott shot, after that, really all Prairie View a &M. Yeah, uh, Prairie View controlled this game from start to finish. It was a great win for Coach Rim and his guys. They did an outstanding job. Uh, they had balanced scoring. They had three people in double digits. So it, it was a great win for them. What about the fact is you look at the stats, though, Grambling leads in field goal percentages, three-point percentages, free throw percentages. They actually led in rebounds according to the stats, but there's the big figure beneath. 20, 23 turnovers, and they live ball turnover. When you when you turn the ball over out in the floor where your defense has no shot at, at defending the play, then you're going to lose ball games, and that's exactly what happened. Don't forget, 7th of February, you and I meet again this time in Texas, but a little further south of here 
and it happens on the campus of Texas Southern University. This Prairie View team takes on the Tigers. Be, be ready for a good game. It's, gonna, it's a great venue. That's a great place to play in. These two teams are big-time rivals. We're going to have us a great game. And we will be there, the Swag Digital Network. You be with us as well. Coverage will start that night around 5.30 for the ladies' game, and the men's game will follow. Thank you so very much for being on the other end of our broadcast. Uh, great camera crew. James Crenshaw's been at the controls. Gatti Wederma, color analyst on the opening game. Van Penaway on game number two. I'm Robert Williamson saying so long.